Hello, this is Hawk Devin, and today we are going to be reading SCP-113, also known as the Gender Switcher. I think that's what it was called. Yes, today is about the trans SCP. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Let's get right into this. Item number, SCP-113. Object class, safe. Special containment procedures. SCP-113 is to be kept in, stor in storage in Site-23. SCP-113 may be handled with laboratory gloves. No organism may be exposed to SCP-113 without prior approval. Personnel exposed to SCP-113 are to be kept under medical observation for seven days. Description SCP-113 resembles a small, polished piece of red jasper. Analysis shows that SCP-113 is not composed of jasper but redacted. Composition inserts that of other recovered objects. When SCP-113 comes in direct contact with the flesh of uh, an organism possessing sex chromosomes, the organism's physical characteristics associated with gender and biological sex are transformed, including genitals and secondary sexual characteristics, either reverse or altered. This process occurs in four stages. Stage 1 lasts approximately 0.2 seconds. SCP-113 bonds with the cells that attaches and induces an unidentified chemical change. This process as causes tissue damage similar to my uh, burns, and SCP-113 cannot re remove from contact with the subject until all stages are complete. Stage 2 lasts approximately 20 seconds. SCP-113 emits a low intensity electromagnetic wave which travels through the subject's body. Subjects may experience nausea and vomiting along with a stinging sensation throughout the body. Stage 3 lasts approximately 60 seconds. Throughout this stage, the subject's cellular makeup is, trans is temporarily transformed. Altered cell composition rate ages widely from being unidentifiable as human to a unique variation of partially differentiated stem cells. The subject will experience intense emulation of all sensory nerves during the final 20 seconds of the stage, and describe this part of, this, of the process as extremely painful. Subjects in poor health may die of shock in this stage. At the end of this stage, the subject's biological sex is altered. In certain cases, the subject's biological X will be changed to the opposite biological sex. All primary and secondary asexual characteristics are altered accordingly. Stage 4. SCP-113 disengages from the subject and becomes inert. Such with its sex chromosomes atypical for their species, such as intersex humans, are affected in unpredictable ways by SCP-113. In human intersex subjects, this appears to be influenced by gender identity, such as sub such as X may be unaffected, or their bodies may change through match baseline and male or female bodies, with sex chromosomes to match, or other results may occur. Usually change seems to match or partially match subjects' gender identity during initial use. If gender identity is not centered, what are or SCP-113 alters its, its effects based on the process of a non standard gender identity is under investigation. Gender identity of human subjects is not typically altered by SCP-113, and subjects with non standard gender identities, typical gender identities which do not master free exposure and biological sex, this usually results in positive psychological effects. And subjects with standard gender identities, male or female, or matching free exposure to biological sex, psychological effects are usually negative. These appear to be natural psychological reactions, and not an anomalous as effect of SCP-113. SCP-113 exposure results in unusual effects in certain species. In the Varanus 
Komodo Oenus, the Komodo Dragon, a number of ZW slash ZZ individuals were transformed to possess WW chromosomes instead of ZZ or ZW, which was in every case, in every instance, fatal. In nematodes, no males were produced despite nematodes having two sexes, hermaphrodite and male. Male subjects became hermaphrodites and hermaphrodite subjects were unaffected. Note, in wild populations, male on nematodes are extremely rare. Subjects have single sex hermaphroditic species such as Earthworms will not be transformed by SP-113. The object's process will, be stop, will stop at the second stage and the object will be, become inert. Previously exposed subjects may undergo SCP-113's effects again by reinitiating contact with SCP-113 after approximately 60 seconds have passed. However, in 25% of cases, immediate and second exposure to SCP-113 fails to transform the subject correctly. Transformation and failure are varies in nature, but usually includes massive bone, organ, and tissue damage to the subject as well as partial or complete obliteration of genitalia. This commonly results in death by organ trauma or internal bleeding. Failure rate can be affected by subjects not coming into contact with SCP-113 for a lengthy period of time, which varies by subject. Parents are under research. Under normal circumstances, transformation failure rate increases exponentially upon multiple exposures. Subjects who survive rapid repeated exposures are eventually transformed data expunged. Further anomalous elements continue to appear as exposure count increases. It's been a while since we've really seen data expansion in an SCP article, hasn't it? Anyway, that was SCP-113, the rock that a lot of trans people wish that they could get their hands on. I think you can guess why. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Who knows what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, but until then, goodbye!